Oh. Yes. By the way, does anybody know when St. Patrick's Day is? No. Is it, it's got to be know, soon. But I feel like I'm in an Elton John nightmare. There we go. No, I, Say, what is more Irish than corned beef? I'm not even close. Uh, my no, no, I'm not even no. close. Soda bread. That's right. To celebrate a St. Patrick's Day, we are looking into the science behind soda bread with Dan Kohler. What? I love the Dan. Oh my, oh, my goodness. Dan. Dan. Where's Dan? Dan. Oh, my God. So today we're really talking about the science. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have you got to make an entrance. We don't have to call it soda bread. It's because it's made with baking soda. And soda is the most important thing here. And it's really important here. That's where all the science are. I can't believe it. Can we hide it? You can see. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. <laughs> Max, thank you. So that was. Sir, what is your name, okay. sir? Here's what, what is your name? Max, thank you so so much. I just want to point out that when Max came in, he didn't see us. He walked into the kitchen and he turned around and he faced all of us, and the look on his face was priceless. When, I don't know why. Probably wondering what you're walking why. into, right? Why do we call it soda bread? You can uh, answer that now. I can't can answer you. that. Oh, but you, you guys didn't catch that over? No, I didn't. I didn't catch that. All right, all right. I'll go back over this again. Um, we call it soda bread because the most important ingredient here is actually baking soda. Mm -hmm. uh, baking oh. soda, and I think we saw this a couple months ago. I did a segment on baking soda volcano. Volcanoes. We'll roll that in right now. And this is what's happening. It's, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember this. this. Is that classic experiment that everyone does in grade school? Yep. It's the baking soda and vinegar volcano. Here it goes. Oh! Oh! Look at that. Oh. Was there glitter in there? Of course there was. I see glitter. Of course. <laughs> oh my God. There is glitter. <laughs> oh my gosh. There is glitter. Oh now, mm. on, on a, really on a microscopic level, that's actually what's happening inside this bread. The baking soda reacts to an acid, and it releases so carbon dioxide, and that's what leavens the bread. There's no yeast in here. This bread is just purely leavened by carbon dioxide. It's delicious, too. Well, I'm wow. glad you enjoy it. Mm. Yes. But uh, really, before 1850, we didn't have baking soda. It wasn't really mass-produced mass until the well, middle of the Well, then what did you use, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Them is fighting with Well, uh, <laughs> Christina and Kim were probably using this in ingredient called potash. Now, oh. potash. Look how I get ready. <laughs> Look how, I didn't even say anything. Hot ash is actually, you, there's clues to where it comes from in the name. It comes from soaking plant ashes in a clay pot. And as they decompose, they produce uh, potassium carbonate. And that also re releases carbon dioxide when it mixes with an acid. Now, baking soda is much easier to use, so that's what we're using today. And let's get started, because uh, soda bread should really be one of the easiest things you can make in the kitchen. Or, am I right, Chef? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So I've got about eight ounces of white flour here and eight ounces of wheat flour. I like the mix for uh, a little bit of flavor. Uh-huh. Um, one and a half teaspoons baking soda and salt. Whisk that together just to evenly distribute them. Baking soda, salt. Mm. Now, remember from that lesson earlier, we needed an acid to activate that baking soda, right? That's the most important ingredient here. So I actually kickstart mine with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Should I drizzle in first? Oh, there's a spout on the side of that. Yeah, oh I know. See that? You know, Whatever, Mark. <laughs> you know what, Dan, I feel like we're being rude to Max. Should we offer Max some soup? <laughs> I know. Absolutely. Thank of course. He's, so, he's so well-behaved. Give him the Irish butter. Enjoy. And the butter. Yeah. And the butter. some Irish Max. butter. Now, once I've got butter. that, that <laughs> vinegar in there, the I'm just going to use buttermilk. Irish and buttermilk, you remember, is actually the milk that's left over from churning butter. And in the sort of rural highlands of of uh, Ireland, there's a lot of cattle grazing. And so, so buttermilk is an ingredient that you'd have, and it is high in lactic acid. So that acid is again going to kickstart that baking soda. So you have to use buttermilk. You can't like, you need to. You need, you need to use it. buttermilk. Well, if you don't have buttermilk, can you make your own? Yes, Christina, and, and have you done this before? Yeah, you put lemon, she does. lemon juice or vinegar okay. into regular milk. So will that work? That Let still, that yeah, because you, you want to have that acidic content. Right. Now, roll up your sleeves, because I just want you to mix this with your hands. It should be really this nice. easy. And again, it should be a fairly loose dough. It's going to take just a minute or so to come together because remember here we're not we're not kneading it we're not giving it a lot of uh, energy to produce gluten strands and protein strands all we want is for the dough to loosely come together so that we can form balls out of it because we want to keep those air bubbles totally intact the more you work it the, the less those are going to stay together and then give rise because hot air when or air when it is heated 
does what, Kim? It rises. There we go. Yep. It expands. Woo! What kind of flour <laughs> did you good. use again for this? Before? I used eight ounces of white flour and eight ounces of wheat flour. You okay, could just use a pound of anything you've got. All right, because it's a beautiful golden it's color. so good. Now, oh. I just dust the counter a little bit. Is the wheat flour, Stuart, is that like a normal thing, or is that no. him being weird? It is no. <laughs> it's you look really, but you can talk use about looking pretty much any flour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Use just regular flour. Now, okay. I mean, really, as you can see, I'm, I'm trying to handle the dough as little as possible because scientifically what we're talking about is the less you handle it, the less the protein strands form here. So we're just loosely forming it into a ball, oh. tossing it a couple of times in the, in the flour right there. Now, you want to flip it over, get that last dusted side. See how it's flat on top right now? Yeah. This is the important part. The cross on top is actually not just for decoration. It serves a scientific and cultural purpose. When we cut into the middle like that, as it bakes, we're gonna let the heat penetrate the center of the bun as much as the outside. And you can see right there, we've got the cross on there. So actually yeah, yeah, yeah. it gets nice and crusty and it cooks in the middle, so it's not doughy there too. But of course, um, Ireland being a very uh, cultural and Catholic nation, that cross also signifies a couple of other things. Chef, any, anything? Don't ask me about that. All right, fair, don't, don't fair. Get into that so, uh, thing with from, me. <laughs> from, from what I've read, from what I've read, one of the reasons time, that they so say long. they cut the dough is to let the devils out or let the fairies out, so that it ensures a perfect bake every time it comes out. Really? <laughs> wow. Now, I put it in a very hot oven. I put them at 450 degrees oh, for about wow. 15 minutes, and then they That's come out perfectly. Hot. The other thing that I really like oh. about that cross is it makes breaking bread. Literally and figuratively, very easy. And you know, for me, when it comes to the holiday time, sharing food with your family is what it's all about. And so it's baking true. this together is a great tradition, and then sharing it together and eating it's together. Exactly like that back at home. Is this exactly. typically you buy a bread? Like this size, like yeah. the larger sizes, yeah, mm -hmm. but it's exactly like that. Do you serve it with your, your meal? Do you eat it with the meal oh, yeah. itself? For breakfast, we have it every morning at breakfast so good. with like butter and honey or jam. Ooh. Ooh. And then the at nighttime, we'd have like a big fry up. And have with sausages, bacon, and bangers. That would be our bread. And the great thing about this, it, the bread didn't take any time to rise. We're not using yeast. There's really, it's a low production it's value. Low so, like you said, you can make this in the morning and serve it 15 minutes later. And Love sometimes, it. you know, um, you can add Guinness to that, and you can add like raisins. You can make like more mm. like a fruit like bread as well. Yeah. So you have it with coffee Amazing. in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've all got some delicious Irish butter and cheese, which, which because the the, uh, the land is so green and there's so much cattle grazing, we have really great grass-fed cattle and, and dairy products. Well, Can we have delicious. some more music, please? <laughs> yes. Back. 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 Yes. There you For go. For more information on how to make perfect yeah. soda bread, you can visit our Pinterest page, and we are going to be right back.